Let me do a clap because that not this time we're gonna get it. Welcome to another episode of Around the Block Talk. I'm your host, Los. Today we have the honor of having Bobby Lefebvre, who is a writer, performer, and cultural worker here in Denver, Colorado. Thank you for joining us today, man. Thanks for the invitation, I appreciate man. you coming yeah. through, man. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. So you are a multi-talented, multi-disciplined artist here in Denver, Colorado. You are also recognized on a national level as well. Um, how did you get started? You know, I, I got started early on as an actor. Um, mm. Acting was sort of the first art form that I, mm -hmm. I, I studied in and went with. Um, okay. Found poetry. Um, that morphed into a combination of both, some mm -hmm. community work, mm -hmm. um, and so I, I really try to merge all of those things in what I do. Wow, uh, and that's and that's been a lengthy history. You know, you kind of evolved. Did you have all these everything that you do now? Like, what what is the type of work that you're doing right now? Like, what kind of projects are you working on now? You know, a, a little bit of everything. So I, I those three things that you mentioned: writer, performer, and cultural worker. Those are sort of the the buckets that I mm -hmm. keep my creative work in. Mm -hmm. So as a writer, uh, I'm a poet. Um, I'm a playwright, uh, and right now I'm working on a web series, mm -hmm. um, sort of a short form web TV type show called Welcome to the North. Side. Um, so as a writer, I do those things. As a mm -hmm. performer, I'm an actor. I'm a performance poet, um, uh, mm -hmm. performance artist, and as a cultural worker, I really use art as mm -hmm. a tool for um, provocation and mm -hmm. social dialogue, critique, and, and change. So um, those things sort of merge together to form my creative professional identity. Wow, and that's and how long has that taken you to actually develop all those three facets? Long time, man. I've been I've been doing this work for a long, long time. So mm -hmm. you know, from the time that I was 15, mm -hmm. um, I'm 35 now. Um, mm -hmm. So I've been doing creative work, um, community work, mm -hmm. uh, since you know my mid-teens. For two decades. Wow, that's a long history. A lot of people don't even have that long of a career yet. You that's know? true. Yeah, yeah. That's that's pretty great. So today, you know, we're going to be talking about. You know, this is going to be a great episode because you're going to be breaking down some knowledge for uh, a good sector of the U.S. that are freelancers, consultants, and independent artists. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that you were, you came out as an independent artist, but you've also been hired to do a lot of different projects. You've been hired by universities, businesses, mm -hmm. the government to do pieces for them, whether it's writing, performance, or whatnot. Yeah. You've been on TEDx as well, and that's, uh, you know, amazing, um, you know, thing to have on your resume, you know, in terms of experience and, and uh, what you've done in your past. So, I think today is going to be really powerful because you're really going to break it down for people who you know may not have a full-on business or have several employees but also are you know independent you know they they may be working in where they're going in and working with different businesses or different individuals or an artist who's trying to get commissioned right sure so that's really a freelance kind of a, 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 a area if you will and also like a consultant because you get advice for your expertise as a, you know a cultural expert you know um, so today we have three points that you're gonna break down for us right what yeah. are those three points and then we'll go into each one individually yeah so the, the first point really is is really Really being able to define yourself you know um, the second point that I, I'm gonna touch on is creating community around your work and then the last one is is you know really about consistency and longevity um, you know once you do the work for a while you have to maintain it at a certain level and you want to always look forward to you know how to grow in the future so those are the three things that um, I guess we'll talk on today okay awesome and just a little backstory. Bobby is really natural at promoting himself, uh, connecting with people, really leveraging his network. Uh, we had this little discussion about he's not a full-on marketer per se as a professional marketer, but he uses a lot of techniques that he's uh, grown into, learned on his own over the over the years that really, really do work. And now we're kind of sort of categorizing them probably for the first time for you, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. In, in that sense. So the first point is, you know, uh, defining yourself. Why is that important first? And that goes for any business, um, but especially for freelancers and consultants and artists who can be seen as sort of like a, a general term and not very specific. Why is it so important to defi define yourself? You know, there's there's a lot of, of competition, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, yes. and, and really being able to um, 
draw from your strengths as an artist, as a, as a community member, mm -hmm. and, and, and really being able to have um, a, a confidence in your work. Once you have a, a strong confidence in what you're doing, you're then able to take that confidence and those mm -hmm. things that you've learned mm -hmm. into really creating a, a, a persona that mm -hmm. you, you use as an artist yep. um, that is recognizable. You know, you mm -hmm. wanna you wanna be able to stand out and be recognizable for your work, mm -hmm. um, and that's really rooted in um, in a really co a confident place of where you come from. Mm -hmm. you, you have to mm -hmm. to really put work in to um, get to a place where you're comfortable with who you are, and really the the defining yourself is really just an expansion of those things that you already are that you're already doing. The, uh, the work that you're doing, you want to just really be able to shine a, you know, shine a spotlight on that mm -hmm. in a way that resonates with people. Mm -hmm. um, and by creating that identity, um, you're, I mean, I guess the term is branding. You're branding yourself and your work in a way that is mm -hmm. um, attractive to people. And, yes. and, and that's, that's part of that, um, that uh, you know, identity building. And that's a very key component because, you know, you actually have your artistic talents in multiple different facets. Did you start out that way or did you first define yourself in one type of art, um, one type of medium, and then expand? How did that work for you? Yeah, yeah, you know, I think one thing that's good about, you know, creatives these days, and even just, just professionals, is mm -hmm. we don't necessarily have to be siloed into, oh, this is what I do, right? Mm -hmm. We can do multiple things, mm -hmm. but if you do decide to do multiple things, you have to also dedicate time and energy to make sure that you're uh, really developing in those areas mm -hmm. and that you begin to see the uh, places that they intersect and overlap. So, mm -hmm. um, like I said, I I started as a performer. The first mm -hmm. time that I ever explored mm -hmm. anything artistic was as an actor uh -huh. um, in eighth grade. Uh, Mrs. Allen, if you're out there, um, <laughs> she brought me into a creative project and, and mm -hmm. put me on stage for the first time. And I had found that that was an amazing way that I was able to express myself. Mm. Um, I got into poetry through uh, attending an event here locally called Cafe Nuba. It's hot and it's black for those people who mm. remember Cafe Nuba. Yeah, um, Cafe Nuba. I went to a, a, a poetry reading at the Gemini Tea Emporium in Five mm. Points. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the first time that I had seen performance poetry. So these people on stage doing this thing that was was poetry, but it was also performative. Mm -hmm. And I had always been a writer. I kept a journal and, and things mm -hmm. like that. And then I, I saw these people performing poetry, which reminded me of, of actors' monologues. Mm -hmm. And I immediately fell in love with it. I started writing, and then I started, you know, not only writing for my own sort of release and in my journal, but I started to write to perform. You know, mm -hmm. so I was writing things that were very personal, very social, and then found an outlet to perform this mm -hmm. um, and then I you know you develop skills you build new networks and then bef you know before you know that it, it, it sort of avalanches into new things and so just following the energy about how those things come to be is, has, has been something that I've really been in tune with mm -hmm. is how I follow that creative energy and meet new people um, build on opportunities mm -hmm. and um, uh, you know so that's sort of morphed into the multi you know um, dimensional creative persona mm -hmm. that I have and, and that I, I've created for myself. And that's really important what you, you pointed out is that you know if you really are going to expect to make a living off of your art or if you're a freelancer um, or a consultant you really have to make sure that you put in quality quality time and effort so you get quality results. No one's gonna hire a uh, sort of okay artist, you know what I mean? You probably get a lot of free invitations to do volunteer work, mm -hmm. but in terms of really expecting to be paid for it, you really have to become a master of your, your art, right? So you can Absolutely, do that. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, spending time, um, you know, mastering your craft, figuring out, you know, how to study, um, how to read up, um, how to research, that's all really, really important in defining yourself. Um, mm -hmm. You have to know the traditions of what you're coming from in order to do something new. Um, and, and, and really, once you develop that, you're actually responsible for helping create the market, too. So once you, um, you know, you've been doing the poetry for a while, you've been doing the acting for a while, then you start to figure out, you know, how you can um, turn that into something new, you know? So that, for me, led into things like talent agents who help me, you know, find work as an actor. It led to me pursuing performance poetry on levels at the college and university circuit, which required an agent. Mm -hmm. um, and then you start, you know, bringing in money from, from your work and you turn this passion into something that's generating, um, you know, real income, mm -hmm. um, which is, is really, really an interesting facet of it as well, because, you know, uh, Obviously, the, the foundation of art needs to be genuine. You know, mm -hmm. it needs to come from a place of, of need and desire. Um, but when you begin to monetize that, it's interesting because you have these different forces that are 
you know, telling you that they want you to do certain things and you have to pick and choose what you're willing to and to not do in that. So um, it's a really, really interesting game. Yeah, it is. And I love how you described it in terms of like your, your evolution, mm -hmm. you know, and it does happen by taking solid steps in every facet. Now, you know, you may not know exactly every decision you're going to make. Most people don't. They go as they are figuring it out, but you have to have some foundations. And this goes for all artists. If you're a musician, a painter, a writer, an actor, if you're a, a, if you're a freelancer or a consultant, it's the same thing for you. You have to all figure out what you're going to be offering. Obviously, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer if you're going to open up a gym. If it's a no-brainer if you're going to open up a certain type of restaurant but when it comes to these um, hybrid kind of careers that really are some of the more exciting careers yeah, out there for sure you know um, you really have to have that foundation and and really create quality that leads us to the next component after you've really developed yourself after you've mastered your your artistry your skill set um, how important and why do you need to create some sort of community behind that? You know, art by nature is a, is a social act, you know, so um, a lot of artists are, you know, esoteric introverts, right, mm -hmm. that, you know, we, we sort of romanticize the idea of what it means to be an artist. Yeah. You know, we think that writers, you know, sit around in berets and, you know, in, in that, you know, uh, visual artists are these, you know, really esoteric people. They're not. You know, they are. We are. <laughs> we are. We're guilty of all that stuff, I guess. Um, but the, the the, I, I believe that the the nature of art is social. You know, yeah. we create art to communicate. We create writing to convey um, personal messages that other people have gone through or been through that resonate with people. We create visual art to um, document a certain experience and existence that we all share together. So engaging with community in a genuine way is something that mm -hmm. I, I really try to do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I found I've never really went out searching to create a market for myself. Yeah. I've done what I do in the way that I do it and the way I want to do it and it's drawn people in um, in, a, in a really organic way. So. Um, I've, I've built relationships with people in community um, through, I guess, networking. But if networking really sounds like a businessy, mm -hmm. you know, tool. Whereas I, I really just attempt to have genuine conversations with people uh, around what I'm doing, around what they're doing, and things happen organically, you know. And, and so, um, creating that community, that network yep. of. of um, other artists and, mm -hmm. and, and, and professionals and community uh, is really, really important to me. And so I, I think that's a foundational element of my work, um, which really focuses on um, using art and writing and performance and, and community work um, to really connect us across the things that would otherwise divide us. So. Well, I, I like what you said in terms of how you created that uh, community. How, what were some of the techniques, or in which way did you engage people? Though, I mean, you're creating your art, you you've got it down, but how did you actually engage people to grow that community? You know, I think as a performer, it's it's sort of you have a, a leg in already when you're in front of people and you're you're performing something, or you're um, you know reading poetry, or you're mm -hmm. uh, by nature of being in front of people, you have the gift and responsibility of having people listen to you. And so after you have people listen to you, um, you talk with them about, you know, hey, uh, how did you like that? Um, they engage with you. It's a conversation. So art that is not a two-way conversation is, is boring. You know, mm -hmm. if you're always just, you know, presenting and never receiving information back, mm -hmm. um, I think you're doing it wrong. And so um, actively seeking out spaces in which art creates dialogue, um, creating people, uh, creating environments where people feel like they can talk to you and mm -hmm. not just hear from you mm -hmm. um, has been really, really important. And that's the relationship building mm -hmm. that I, I found is, mm -hmm. is really important, is this, this way of, of not only presenting something to someone, but also learning from them. And mm -hmm. then, you know, relationships just sort of tend to, tend to form in, mm -hmm. in, in those ways. How about when that's the in-person component, right? Mm -hmm. And and it's all networking. I mean, networking can be you walk down the street, you meet somebody, and then you can 
network there in that moment. Sure. But let's say when you're not in person, when you're not, you don't have that captive audience. What other ways have you been able to reach out to people? Let's say online. Like, what do you do online? Um, so I think artists need to be really, really in tune with what the newest ways of communication are. So obviously, I utilize social media quite a bit to engage with people. Um, you know, social media is interesting in that you are able to build a, an online persona. You're able to share with people what you want to share with them. You're able to curate in a certain image, or you're you're able to curate um, the way that you wish to be perceived which is um, an interesting thing, good and bad, because mm -hmm. um, you know you can tell the world you're this person or this thing, but if your work doesn't really back that up, it's, mm -hmm. people are gonna find out about it. Like, mm -hmm. the, you're gonna be, um, it's whack when people are, I'm this, I'm this, yeah. I'm this, and then they don't deliver with the work. Yeah. And that goes back to really creating a product that you're, 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 you're proud of. Mm -hmm. So anything that I do, I, I want it to be the best that I can. And so utilizing social media, um, having that consistency, and creating a community uh, around that is really, really important. Mm -hmm. Finding followers, um, finding entry points to have com you know conversations with people online, mm -hmm. um, pushing my work out in a way that um, feels good to me, you know, that feels organic to me, that feels, uh, you know, um, uh, not contrived mm -hmm. is, is something I look for. So, you know, the way I message things, the way I, I, I talk about what I'm doing um, usually comes from a first person narrative. You know, I'm mm -hmm. telling people, hey, look, this is what I'm doing. Um, I'm interested in this. I'm excited about this and I want you to be too. So engaging with people in that way through social media has really, been really, really important. Um, having that presence is, is huge. Yes. You know, having social oh, media presence killer. is huge. Super um, killer. Utilizing hashtags and, and you know, um, doing what all the kids are doing these days, you know, learning the new <laughs> technology, um, w website and branding and, and you know, creating a, a physical image too, you know, having mm -hmm. good headshots and, and um, you know, having all of those tools to um, really convey the message that you're trying to convey to people. And I like what you're talking about because you're always constantly, as an artist, the beautiful uh, space that you live in is that when you make content, you're striving for making original content, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and then that goes into, especially in social media and online, is virility, right? Yeah. When when you create something that goes viral, how important is that to always be thinking about creating something original that can pick up that sort of traction online? Yeah, yeah. I think that the good thing and the bad thing about online, you know, um, marketing or online engagement is it's created a way for um, something that otherwise would not have been seen by millions of people or whatever. So when something goes viral, it's it's it's, it's amazing to see how people have mm -hmm. taken to something. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also created the need to be more original because the internet yes. and social media is so oversaturated with with messaging and, and videos and uh, you know you really have to try to, to do something new and fresh mm -hmm. and, and engage people in a way that they haven't been engaged before or to take a, you know a, a risk with doing something new. Um, so that's the blessing and the curse of social media is it's flooded with things and you have to try to figure out where you fit in in, in that whole um, world. And, and that's a good thing though. Don't don't look at that as a negative. That look at that as sharpening your skill. You know, steel sharpens steel. And when you begin to get out there, especially being an artist, but let's not forget freelancers and consultants, mm -hmm. you have to be different. You can't be cookie cutter like everyone else. If you want to be on social media just for fun, it doesn't matter. But if you're trying to really express yourself, get yourself known, um, and really get traction. Think of making original content, and that's one of the things, the th themes that we always go over with the clients that I work with uh, through Blue Bamboo is that what are you doing that's original? Don't cookie cutter someone else. You know, I would hate for someone to watch this show and think about copying someone that's on the show or identical to, let's say, your style or whatnot. You need to find your own voice yeah. and make it a very good voice if you're going to be marketing it and getting it on online. It might be like mad cliche or whatever, but you know, uh, originality is really what sets us apart from each other, right? Mm -hmm. So like getting back to a space where you're being more of who you really are, that's what's interesting to people. Mm -hmm. People don't want to see the same thing over and over again. They want to know you as a, as a person, as an artist, um, as a creative, and, and you know, the more uh, original you can be with yourself, the more that you can tell your um, personal, you know, small circle story, mm -hmm. the more it's really gonna resonate with people. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so there's a lot of copycats out there. The, there's a lot of biters, there's a lot of people that are interested mm -hmm. in trying to reproduce things. And while I actually believe that you should um, borrow from, you know, mm -hmm. people that you, you know, really uh, appreciate 
that you you admire. Um, look at other people's hustles. You know, like look mm -hmm. at people that you aspire to be like. Look at how they hustle. How do they market themselves? Mm -hmm. What what um, social media sites do they use? What what works for other people? So that's um, something that in the conversation I think is really important. When you find someone who you uh, really aspire to be like, you know, take a look at how they're utilizing social media and messaging and, and things like that because that's that'll help you build upon your own originality. You know, you don't want to bite, but you definitely yeah. want to borrow. Yeah, and that's reverse engineering. What Bobby's talking about is looking at what other people are doing and figuring out how they did it. What are the components that work? And we do that all the time. And anything that you want to do in terms of like getting your voice out, you want to see, like Bobby said, is you want to stay up to, uh, up to date with technology and new techniques and approaches. That means you need to look at it and reverse engineering. Car companies, technology companies, all kinds of businesses and, and entities have done that throughout history. They look at something and reverse engineering. And that goes into part of having a strategy. You know, you've built, although it's been like a naturally built strategy for you because yeah. the way you've just moved uh, up and down with your history, um, in your experience, you have developed some sort of strategy, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think um, what's what's unique, I don't know if it's unique, but what I how I operate is I, I have these very two distinct sides of me. So I'm, I'm mad creative and, and crazy, um, you know, can be esoteric in that mm -hmm. traditional artist um, when I'm creating and when I'm, when I'm busy being creative. Mm -hmm. um, but I also have this very practical side that allows the business aspect to, to kick in and I'm very organized and um, I think artists, uh, you know, they get a bad rap because they're mm -hmm. not very good business people. They mm -hmm. don't call people back. <laughs> if they do, it's late. They don't return emails. And I have a very, um, uh, a fire that keeps me really, really well organized. And that basic communication with clients or with uh, whoever it may be that's relying on you to communicate to, to get work done, um, I can do that while at the same time being very, very creative. So the work still happens, but the opportunities um, also are able to be manifested because um, there's, there's a split that happens there between the creative and the business side. So my strategy has really been, um, you know, being really, really engaged in the creative work and creating but also um, being able to turn that into something um, more organized and professional to be able to present that in a way that is, is appealing to people. And that's super important because if you're going to be an independent artist, um, a freelancer or, or consultant, many businesses that come to you either are coming to you because they want originality or they know that they're gonna have a very personable uh, and personal relationship with you otherwise they would go to these big entities they would go find someone else to fill the shoes but when you do get that assignment when you do get commissioned to do some work call them back be on point be organized people have expectations that you need to manage and if you don't manage those expectations you will definitely lose lose out on opportunity and that goes for any business but in particular freelancers independent artists and consultants because these uh, individuals is where I hear a lot that people don't get called back yeah. people didn't send the proposal they didn't sign the contract and it's little things like that that if you're really trying to actually make a living for yourself if you plan to have a family if you plan to have a future you need to be really well organized and all of that is part of your strategy well and I think it's also okay to have different professional professional identities, you know, so you, you're, you're going to interact, like I interact differently when I'm strictly creating something mm -hmm. out of need and desire. Um, when I'm commissioned to do something, my professional persona is different in that arena because I know I'm, I'm being hired to deliver a product. Um, and, and while I'm true to the to the artistic process, I know that I'm also creating something for someone else. Yes. Um, so being able to code switch between, um, you know, creating art for personal use, creating art for community use, creating art for commercial use, mm -hmm. um, it requires a different, you know, personality and code switching between those things. And again, there's always intersection between them. They live, mm -hmm. they can live together. Yes. Um, but knowing how to communicate and knowing how to, to really leverage those different needs is is really really important and it's um, there's nothing bad about that no, like you, not at you, all. you can I can be you know the person who creates art for the sake of creating art I can be someone who's hired to write a script for a company um, and you know those things can, can coexist yeah and they need to coexist in today's world because things are there's there's not a defined line anywhere and having that said that leads us into you're gonna put all this work 
now you have to be consistent. Right. What What is the most important reason why to be consistent? Consistency really breeds um, a, a sense of, of longevity. You know, when you're when you're consistent, when you're constantly producing at a certain level, mm -hmm. um, it builds trust. People yes. people have trust in you. They have trust in and not only your work products, but they have trust in you as a person. When you when you commit to the things that you say you're going to do, it builds character, and that professional character is something that you can't buy. You can't buy the simple things. You can't buy loyalty, and mm -hmm. you can't buy um, um, sincerity, and, and and all these things live, you know, together. You know, and so that's mm -hmm. something that I think is really really important is is creating that that quality um, mm -hmm. that people can rely on and um, also appreciate you for. So. Consistency is the thing that keeps you in the game for a long time. If you don't have consistency, you're gonna be like those cats that are the one hit wonders. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the, the key components or ways that you stay consistent? You know, you have to continue creating. You have to always be busy uh, and, and Sometimes being busy doesn't necessarily mean that you're being productive. So you have to be able to also manage the two. Uh, you always have to, to be growing and learning and, and being humble about mm -hmm. um, sometimes you fail. Sometimes yes. you, ma you make something or you create something that people aren't going to resonate with or that mm -hmm. you're not going to resonate with. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to be okay letting those things go. Um, but moving along uh, and, and challenging yourself um, is is really really important trying new things not getting stagnant is is really really important and um, continuing to meet people continuing mm -hmm. to build with people to, to you know make new connections and and build new communities um, and and really doing things that matter you know I think a lot of people get burned out because they're either trying to create something for someone else or they get too wrapped up in the commercial aspect of creating art and, and culture mm -hmm. and it becomes more of, 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 a, of a job than it does um, you know just kind coming from a genuine place of, of, of needing to create. And, and saying yes, saying yes and no, being able to say yes to people <laughs> yes. And, and being able to say no to people is really important too. Like, you know, I'll get approached by a nonprofit who doesn't have a budget, but I really believe in what they're doing mm -hmm. and I'll work for free. Or I'll get approached by a corporation who has a lot of money, who wants to pay me what I don't think is a fair wage and I say no. Mm -hmm. So being able to, to say yes and no is a privilege, um, but you should be able to be comfortable with what your, your price points are, mm -hmm. what you're um, willing to and to not do, mm -hmm. and um, that also helps create longevity because it builds trust and it also builds uh, professional character. So, so you develop yourself, you, you created this consistency, but how important is it to keep that dialogue going with sharing updates, with having good quality content, and, and using social media. Why is that important to keep in contact with people? It's just really important to show people that you're still busy, that you're still mm -hmm. moving, that you're still mm -hmm. working. Once you've built that reputation of someone who, who does good quality work, mm -hmm. who, who cares about you know uh, what they're doing, mm -hmm. uh, people tend to be drawn to that. And so mm -hmm. it's important to, to be repetitive with what you're doing, to keep uh, being uh, in, 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 the, in the public eye, to show people exactly you know what you're doing and when you're doing it to keep people interested uh, you know that's building audience is really really important you know mm -hmm. and, and wanting to keep people engaged with your work uh, again because it's social I view the work that I do uh, as a social act it's 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 a conversation uh, and I want people to engage you know we, we create work um, so that it's seen you know yes. we create work with, because we have to but we also especially when you're creating work with the message you want to be able to, to have people see that so mm -hmm. um, that has created a lot of um, you know opportunities for me where people are interested in what I'm doing and they're willing to come and talk to me about my work and then they're able to mm -hmm. put that on um, you know in newspapers in mm -hmm. their own publications and those networks are really really uh, really important to maintain as well you know to to reach out to people when you're doing stuff things as mm -hmm. you know simple as a press release Mm -hmm. Letting people who may not know what you're mm -hmm. doing know about what you're doing because mm -hmm. you think it's important, you know. And, and and when they're documenting what you're doing, um, you use that as leveraging to to get your message across. And when you're doing work that is is very rooted in, in community and, and social justice, uh, those those messages are important because we need more people um, who have something to say uh, to be heard. And if we're able to to sort of curate that message of of, of social justice and, and things that matter. Um, we're reaching more people. And it's important to continue that conversation. And in the, back in the day before the internet, you had to do the same thing, right? You, you had to show up at different places, at different events, get seen, get known. That's still very much needed, 
but also now the extension is the online, right? And you have to keep that conversation going. Yeah. So today we broke down some amazing pieces of insight from Bobby Lefebvre, who is a super talented artist. He was able to break down three key points. If you're a freelancer, a consultant, and an ind or an independent artist, or if you're like Bobby, you're all three, right? You have to have three key components in your arsenal, okay? So let's review. You have to define yourself. You have to make sure you have your identity, right? Kind of like your fingerprint. Yeah, you define know? who you are. You know, define who that, who that is. Enhance your own um, abilities and strengths um, to really share that with people. So then second is create a community. Now that you've developed yourself, you're an awesome writer or an actor, musician, a freelancer of any sort, now you need to create the community. Yeah, creating community is really important because again, art is a conversation. And without people to engage, you're, you're really just uh, you know, engaging yourself in your own sort of ego. So uh, community is really, really important to, to build. Definitely, having community is key so that you can now create consistency for longevity, right? Yeah, consistency is really for me um, what I look forward to. Longevity and, and being able to be around, um, adjusting what I'm doing to meet new demands and, and really being in it for the long haul. You know, I, I don't want to be the one hit wonder. I want to be the person that is, is always delivering um, high quality work and, mm -hmm. and building you know, new genuine relationships with people um, about things that matter. And that's super important. It's super important to really have these key components in your arsenal so that you could actually find success. He's a very successful artist who has that. found his way, his voice, and it's very important that you take this information to heart. So now that you've been able to break down this information, if people want to stay in contact with you and follow you, how, how can they stay stay up with you? You know, I'm on all the social media platforms, so Facebook, Bobby Lefebvre, Instagram, Bobby Lefebvre, Twitter, Bobby Lefebvre. Again, that that messaging, right? Mm -hmm. That consistency in, 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 in even social media platforms is really, really important. Um, BobbyLefebvre.com, uh, you can check me out online. Um, also, with the web series I'm working on right now, Welcome to the North Side is the, um, you know, the, the name that we're going by on social media, YouTube, uh, Facebook, so check us out there. Um, I also run a neighborhood um, blog uh, called We Are North Denver, which is, is really, um, you know, taking a look at uh, the phenomenon on a gentrification and um, how that's affected the North Denver neighborhood. Um, so utilizing that platform as a, as a conversation started too. Um, but yeah, Google me uh, or, or check me out online in any way. Um, yeah, I'd be willing to engage with anyone. Awesome. Definitely, you need to stay up with him. He has the We Are North, uh, Welcome to the North Side is a great series that you have to check out. It was spawned from um, a lot of your work in the community and that came from We Are North Denver as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a great platform. I was able to film some content for him and uh, help build some of the platform and it definitely has worked. And we employed all the three facets that we talked about today. So, Bobby. Thank you so much for joining right on, us man. today on another episode of Around the Block Talk. Thanks for the invite. Um, I'm looking forward to the next episode of uh, Welcome to the North Side. Yeah, so I'm excited, man. We've been having fun. It's going to be great. If you like this video and found value, please like and share and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get more marketing advice that works. I'm your host, Los, and until next time, we'll see you on the next episode of Around the Block Talk.